in my last video, I said that there are only two password managers that I recommend. Those two are Bitwarden and KeePass. In these videos, I will walk you through both of these password managers, similarities, differences, which one is right for you, and how to get started using them. Before I begin, I would like to remind you that the new oil is entirely community supported. Thanks to donations from viewers like you, we do not have any ads, premium content, or paywalled content, or anything like that. If you would like to help us keep it that way and help this project be sustainable, be sure to donate. We take Bitcoin, Monero, Brave Tips, or Open Collective. That last one is our preferred method these days, and it does allow for custom donations, either one time or reoccurring. Entirely up to you, but but no matter what route you take, every little bit helps. Thank you so much. So for starters, if you are not sure why you need a password manager, please check out my last video on passwords. I'm going to assume that you've done that or paused and went and did that and now you are back. So let's dive right in. Bitwarden and KeePass. Let's start with the similarities. Both are, of course, password managers. Both are open source and both are available on all platforms, which I define as being Debian, Mac, Windows, Android, and iOS. That is pretty much where the similarities end. The biggest difference between the two is that Bitwarden is cloud-based and KeePass is not. Now, there are ways to sync up your KeePass vault, and I will talk about that. Some of the other differences include that Bitwarden is audited. It can also be self-hosted. I don't know if that really counts as a difference, considering that KeePass, again, is not cloud-based, but it's worth mentioning. And because Bitwarden comes from a central authority, all the apps are the same. If you look up Bitwarden on the App Store, the Play Store, your web browsers of choice for a plugin, you will find them all. They're very easy to find because they're all made by the same company and distributed evenly. KeePass, on the other hand, is a little bit different. See, KeePass is not really an app, it's more of a protocol, kind of like Matrix or XMPP. This means that any KeePass app that you use is actually a client. Some of those clients are audited, but not all of them are. The KeePass protocol itself has been audited. That was quite some time ago, but it should still be pretty relevant. I mean, it hasn't changed a whole lot over the years from what I understand, so it should still be pretty secure, even though the audit is a little bit older. Due to the nature of KeePass as a protocol, that means that not all of the clients are available everywhere. So you may need to use several different clients if you want to get that everywhere permeation that you would get from Bitwarden. But don't panic, you can still do that. It's also worth noting that because of the nature of KeePass, again, as a protocol and not an app, that means that it falls on the community to create different clients and different forks that are capable of utilizing this protocol, which in plain English means that if you don't like the way one looks or functions, you can probably find another one for that same operating system that has the features you're looking for. Or if you're a sufficiently skilled programmer, you can make one yourself. Again, for the average person, I think the biggest difference is going to be that one is cloud-based and one is not, which means one will automatically sync all of your data in between devices, but the other one you have to sync up manually. So if you decide that KeePass is right for you, I cannot stress how important it is to keep good backups, because if that vault gets lost, everything in it goes with it. For most people, I recommend Bitwarden because it's going to be very user-friendly, very simple, it looks clean, and it's got all of the features that you need for free. There is a premium tier and it does have a few really cool things in it, but for the most part, you can get everything you need for free. If you're still not sure which one is right for you, I recommend watching both videos or better yet, try them both out. Again, they're both free, at least the basic functionality. So try them out and see which one works for you. Having said all that, let's get started with KeePass. Cirex has rebranded. I was literally just there 15 minutes ago. As I mentioned before, KeePass is not really an app. It's more of a protocol. So if you're familiar with like Matrix or XMPP, it's kind of like that. So when you're using any of the KeePass apps, you're using the KeePass protocol with these various clients. I'm gonna focus on one of them, but just to show you an example, if you go to keepass.info, this is the official site for KeePass, and then you go to downloads, it will show you the original client from KeePass, as well as all of these other clients for Android, iPhone, Mac, et cetera, et cetera. 
Really, at the end of the day, it's personal preference. Feel free to try them out and find the one that's right for you. The one I'm going to focus on is KeePass XC, which works on Linux, Mac, and Windows. I don't know why Windows isn't listed here, but it does work on Windows. For Android, the most popular version is KeePass DX. And for iOS, the most popular one is Strongbox. These are very user-friendly, they're frequently updated and stuff like that. But again, feel free to use whatever you are most comfortable with. If you don't like any of those three, there's a whole list right here. Go ahead and check them out. So as I said, I will be showing you KeePass XC. And we start by going to keepassxc.org. Right here on the front, it detects that I am on Windows and it takes me to the official installer, but Again, it's available on Linux, it's available on Mac. You could also compile the source code if you hate yourself and choose to do that. I am on 64-bit Windows, so I'm gonna click MSI Installer here. Now, if you know how to verify PGP signatures, that's a pretty good idea. If you don't, I will cover that another time. For now, just know that if you're getting it directly from the official source, it is most likely safe. Now we've downloaded this, I'm gonna go ahead and install it. Gives me a little warning about executables. So we're just gonna go ahead and go through. You should always read the terms of service. That should go without saying. Next. And then I can create a shortcut for the desktop. I can auto start if I want. These are entirely up to you. Personally, I don't want it to auto start, but I will create a desktop shortcut and install. Okay, so that was really quick. And then launch key pass is checked, which is fine. I want it to be checked. So here we go. Would you like KeePass XE to check for updates on startup? Personally, I would recommend that unless you have a very high threat model, which is something we talked about in another video. And then if for some reason you choose not to, you can always check for updates manually. Like it says, updates are really important. I recommend you check for those often. So here is our KeePass window. Now, if you already have a KeePass database, which is your password vault, you can open it, but we are going to create a new one and it is going to ask us for a name, which, you know, entirely up to you. Description, you don't need one, but you can if you want. Decryption time, I just leave it at one second. Um, I leave all these defaults the same. If you know what you're doing, you can feel free to make some changes here. For the average person, these defaults should be just fine. And now it will ask you for a master password, which we want to be a passphrase. So KeePass, uses this little square here. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be, but this is the button that they use to automatically generate passwords. So we click on that and we'll go to a passphrase and they have already picked a default of seven words, go them. And they have given us nurture, dropkick, perfectly, fly away, angelfish, rundown, startup. You know, I say five or more, seven is fine. Let's just go with seven. So, and then you can change the word separator. You could get rid of it altogether, or you can make it a hyphen whatever you want. I'm gonna make a note of this so that I don't lose it as we're doing this demonstration. And then I'm gonna apply that. And that is gonna be my master password. So one drawback of KeePass is that it doesn't really have traditional two-factor, like the kind that you scan with the QR code, but it does have a very user-friendly way to use a YubiKey or a hardware token. This is something I will talk about in another video but basically hardware tokens are about as unhackable as you can get. Nothing is ever unhackable, but these are pretty freaking close. So if you have a hardware token, you can go ahead and use this. You can also use a key file. Personally, I've never done this before. It's a file that you keep with you and it's a second form of authentication because then you know the password, that's something you know. And then there's the file, which is something you have. If you do not feel comfortable with a hardware token, if you're using a strong passphrase, I think you can probably get away with not using two-factor on KeePass. And the reason is because it is not cloud-based. So therefore, there would already be several steps that an attacker would have to go through in order to get access to your database and compromise it. And as long as you're being reasonably responsible, I think those steps are very unlikely to happen. Not to sound nihilistic, but if you're being smart with your KeePass database and an attacker still gets access, they were probably gonna get access regardless. If you do feel like having a YubiKey, I totally encourage you to set that up. Okay, and with that, we're done. It will ask us where to save things. I'll go ahead and save it in downloads. And that's passwords.kbdx, which is my KeePass database. Save. Now here is our vault. We have our root folder, which is just default. We can add new folders and we'll call this the new oil. We can add notes, you can add an icon. So since this is the new oil, let's do 
just to show you guys what it looks like. Um, let's do the little, oh, it's the Linux penguin. Let's do him, he's great. Okay, and then we'll save that. So here's my little Linux penguin. Now, in order to add a new entry, I just click this little plus sign. KeyPass only has one kind of entry. If you watch the Bitwarden video, you'll see that with Bitwarden, you can do like credit cards and identities and lists and things. KeyPass is really only designed for logins. Now that doesn't mean you can't use it for other stuff. I could literally just write grocery list and then eggs, milk, time machines. Boom, there's my grocery list, there's my notes but that's not really what it's designed for. That's kind of taking advantage of the system, which again is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But let me go ahead and show you. Very similar to any other password manager. What is the title? We'll use Proton. My Proton Mail username is the new oil at protonmail.com. Password, we'll click over here to generate a password and I recommend 25 or more. We've already got our uppercase, lowercase numbers and special characters, so we'll apply that. Here's a URL. Now, this is something that's really cool. Let's say I go to protonmail.com. Now, as soon as I'm here, I click login and it will take me to the login screen. And once that's loaded, I copy this link and I paste it here. Now, here's something that I think is kind of cool. It's not necessary, but you know how they say you should change your password periodically. Technically, that's bad advice but only because people end up reusing passwords or using variations of passwords. But if you're randomly generating passwords like this, then sure, go ahead and make your passwords expire. It's up to you. Sorry, we're kind of getting off topic here, but yeah, so if you click this, then your password will expire. You can say exactly when you want it to expire, or you can say, you know, tomorrow, one week, two weeks, three weeks, they got some presets in here. You don't have to use that. Like I said, if you're using a strong password, you're probably fine. But if you want that extra level of security, you can set that and then periodically KeyPass will let you know. It'll just show you, uh, it'll look like a, here actually, let me see if I can show you. So that's what it looks like is just a dash through and then there's a little X there. For now, we'll get rid of that. And so that's what my entry will look like. Here's our notes section where we can keep two-factor backup keys, which again, I'll talk about in another video. We can keep answers to security questions and stuff like that. Real quick, let me jump back and tell you what I was saying. This here is the URL. So really common phishing attacks nowadays are where the attacker, or have been like this for quite a while, the attacker will send you an email that says, oh, there's a problem with your account. Click here to log in and resolve the issue. And then when you click it, it takes you to a fake site that copies your login information. The beauty of a password manager is we have the URL right here. And what experts recommend is when you get an email like that, don't click on the email, go straight to the website. So for example, if I get an email that says, hey, there's a billing problem with your ProtonMail account. ProtonMail has a free tier, by the way, but if you pay for the paid one, there's a billing problem. Click here to log in. Don't do that. Go here and hit this button right here to copy the URL. There's also a hotkey for that, but I don't remember it off the top of my head. And then we'll go back to my web browser and boom, right there. And now I know I'm going to the actual ProtonMail website and not some kind of phishing site. KeyPass, uh, again here, I can go ahead and pick a custom logo if I want, or something really cool I can do is I can download the favicon from the website. So it'll check that URL and you'll see right here, it's kind of hard to see because I'm on dark mode, but that is the ProtonMail icon. And now, boom, look at that ProtonMail icon right there. So it's very easy to keep track of them. Now, keep in mind, when you do that, you are technically pinging the website. So if you've got a very high threat model, that may not be something you want to do. But if you've got a low threat model and you're using like a VPN, which is something we'll talk about another time, then you probably don't have much to worry about. You can go ahead and download the favicon. And again, it makes it very visually pleasing and easy to keep track of. So that's pretty much KeyPass. It's very straightforward. There's a search function here if I type in Proton and that does work both ways. You know, here I was in the new oil folder and I search grocery and it shows me in the root folder, there's a grocery list. That's also helpful because if you're like me and you have multiple accounts for different things, then if you do a search, it'll show you what folder it's in. So let's say I go ahead and make a new group and this will be personal stuff and I have, um, We'll say Proton, don't make multiple Proton accounts because that is against the terms of service. And if they catch you, they will shut down one of your accounts. But just hype for now, just to show you guys how this works. So when I look Proton, look at that. There's my personal one and there's my new oil one. So now I know which one I'm looking for. And I don't have to guess or I don't have to look at the username. Now, as far as importing all of your existing passwords, if you're bringing them from like Chrome or LastPass, there is an import here. 
there is for older key pass versions there is for one password and there's also uh, csv files which most of them will let you download automatically if you are curious on how to do that Bitwarden does actually have, and I will go ahead and post this in the video description, they have instructions on how to import data. You basically just need to follow the first half. So for example, if I'm gonna go from Chrome, here's the instructions on how to export from Chrome. And then once I've done that part, then I just go over here to KeePass and import my database. You can also export your database into a spreadsheet for a backup. Just remember that when you do this, it will no longer be in an encrypted format and anybody who gets their hands on that device can read it. So if you're gonna do this as a, maybe like a worst case scenario backup, then I definitely recommend you store that somewhere very, very safe. And I mean, that's pretty much it. There's some settings here. You can see your auto type settings. You can set it to like automatically launch at system startup, all that kind of stuff. Uh, when to clear the clipboard, automatically lock the database, all kinds of stuff. There is one more feature that I think a lot of people would find very helpful, and that is browser integration. So if you go to settings right here, the little wheel, you click on browser integration and you click enable. You will have to download a plugin, but as you can see, it links right here and you can even tell it which ones you want to use. So I use Firefox and then I click this button and it'll take me straight to the actual plugin. When I add this to Firefox, this will allow me to create a little browser plugin that when I go to any kind of website, it will automatically recognize, hey, this is in your vault. Do you want to log in? And again, this is another great phishing tool because if you go to a website and that little browser thing doesn't pop up, then you know it's not the actual site. And that should be a red flag to go, hey, wait a minute, it should have popped up and asked me to log in, why didn't it? For those who are curious, this plugin doesn't send any information back to KeePass. It is integrating directly with your vault that is here on your device and just pulling the data directly from your vault. So it's not syncing anything with the cloud, it's not going anywhere, it's staying right on your device. On that topic, last but not least, we talked about the idea of using KeePass on multiple devices, how it's available for iPhone and Android and things like that. There is no easy way to do this. If you try to do this, you basically have two options. One of them is the entirely offline route, which is where you download the mobile version of KeePass, you plug it into your computer, and then you manually sync up your vault. You drag and drop it or whatever the case may be. For example, with iPhone, this can be done through iTunes. I would plug in my phone, iTunes would pop up, and then I would have the option to synchronize my vault with Strongbox. The other option is to use a cloud service. So you could use, I don't recommend them, but for example, you could use Google Drive or Dropbox and save the vault. One advantage that those services have is on your computer, they allow you to save a folder. So you could save the vault in this folder and then it will automatically sync to your phone. And then all you have to do is tell Strongbox to open that file so you always have the latest version. It should be noted that cloud storage is a completely different topic. When it comes to encrypted cloud storage that is capable of doing this, my first recommendation would be Filin, Filin.io. They are completely open source. They've got a free tier and they seem pretty trustworthy. I've used them for quite a while. You get 10 gigs of storage, and again, they have a folder that you can sync up on your computer, and then you can download the app, and it will automatically synchronize. As you can see here, they do have apps for both Android and iOS. And again, the desktop app. The other option I've used in the past is sync.com. They are not open source, but I have used them quite a lot in the past. Again, they have a free tier with five gigs of storage. It is end-to-end -end encrypted, and they also have mobile apps for Android and iOS, as well as a folder. You can also use Nextcloud, but if you're using Nextcloud, this video is probably beneath you and we will talk about Nextcloud another time. Nextcloud, for those who don't know, it is kind of the golden standard for private cloud storage. It's like a self-hosted Google Drive almost. It's very, very powerful. But again, we'll talk about that another time. The point is that is an option. The main thing I wanna drive home if you decide to go with that option is to keep in mind, you are trusting your database to that third party. So make sure that you're using a very strong password. If you are using a two-factor key, like a YubiKey, make sure you get one that can interface with a mobile device so that you can still unlock your phone when you open the password vault on your phone. I'll be totally honest, if you choose to sync things through the cloud like this, 
you may as well just go with Bitwarden in my opinion. However, that is entirely up to you. If you do not trust Bitwarden for whatever reason, but you still want that cloud synchronization, then this is probably going to be your best bet. And that is pretty much all there is to it. That is how to get started using password managers. I want to leave you with a few tips of advice that I think will help speed you along in your journey. Number one, start by changing your critical passwords. If you're using this video and this is your introduction to password managers and you're coming from using bad passwords, then start off by identifying the absolutely critical accounts that you cannot afford to lose, like your bank account, your email account, online medical portals, anything like that. Stop Stop what you're doing and go change those passwords to secure ones right now using the secure password generator in your password manager of choice. The rest of them, if you want, you can change them all at once. That's what I did, but I will admit that took like an entire weekend. That was a very exhausting and involving process. So for most people, you're probably going to want to change it as you go. So for example, next time you log into something, go ahead and change that password. And then next time you order pizza, go ahead and change that password. As I mentioned, you can use the notes section for your two factor backup codes. That's something we'll talk about in another video, but that's a really good idea. I recommend doing that. I also mentioned that you can use the note sections for security questions. Now here's a real quick trick about that. When you get asked a security question, it'll usually be something like, what was your elementary school or what was your dad's middle name? In today's world full of data breaches, those are actually very easy questions to find the answer to. If a criminal already has enough information to steal your identity, they can probably find that information in just a few minutes online. So instead of answering those questions, honestly, use your passphrase generator to come up with a random word or a couple of random words and use that instead. And then use the note section to remember that. So for example, if the the question is, what was your dad's middle name? Come up with Snow Leopard and put that. I don't recommend using actual passwords for this. I recommend using words or passphrases because I have definitely had situations where I've had to call in and verify my identity and they go, hey, what's your dad's middle name? Then I have to sit there and go capital G one exclamation point lowercase c and it's just it's easier just to use a word. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you to get you started in using better passwords and managing your accounts better. I really encourage you to try this. I'm assuming if you made it this far that you're genuinely interested in trying this, but I know some people are kind of like, I'll get to it later. It seems like a lot of work. Go step by step, create an account, import your existing passwords, and change the important ones. Just start with that. It'll only take probably about a half an hour tops but the security that you get will be priceless. I have honestly never had anyone start using a password manager and then come back to me and be like, yeah, I quit using that. It's kind of hard and it's kind of a waste of time. Literally every person I've ever convinced to use a password manager has come back to me later and gone, holy crap, how did I live without this? This is such a life-changing thing. Don't sleep on it go ahead and take advantage. Before I go, I want to remind you that the new oil is entirely community supported. You can help us stay that way by donating via Bitcoin, Brave Tokens, Monero, or on Open Collective, which by the time this video comes out, we should have reward tiers out. Your support helps us remain influence free and helps me to be able to dedicate more time and energy to putting out better quality videos. Until the next video, if you want to learn more about password managers and passwords, check out thenewoil.org.